Parker 51 guy back and as promised I am here with a video for another pen repair this time it's this pen here this is a Parker dual fold uh, it's about four and a half inches long obviously it's not the full size senior um, at any rate this pen um, is a vintage pen uh, it has probably at least uh, 80 years approximately uh, uh, since its manufacture and uh, I need to do some cleanup and so forth on it to prep it for the restoration so I'm going to do some things and I'll be right back okay what we have here are the individual components of this uh, fountain pen from top to bottom we have the blind cap uh, this is uh, black hard rubber and uh, with age it can oxidize and get kind of a chocolate brown color. This isn't um, that oxidized, although it's not shiny, you know, patent shoe black. Um, next we have the button. It's brass and um, that's what you depress to fill the pen it goes into the barrel um, it's fairly easy to get out if it's not really corroded uh, you might want to use some heat right at that point where the button goes in and um, you can just actually um, it has four flanges it might be hard to see but uh, those allow it to compress so that it can fit back into the opening and there it is um, now if the pens assembled the button will actually remain stuck out um, that brings me to the next part that goes into the barrel it's the uh, pressure bar um, the bent angled end is going to be sticking out the back hole uh, covered by the button and when you press it down it flexes and this uh, rigid bar actually acts like a kind of like a if you were to step on something it's like the sole of the shoe pressing in on the sack um, that brings us to the barrel you're gonna have uh, the section end where the section is going to insert has threads for the cap to actually screw onto. And the back end, as I discussed, is where the button goes in um, and also the blind cap screws on. And then you have the section with the nib uh, unit and the feed inserted. Unfortunately, yeah, apparently someone cut off the lucky curve um, from that feed. It looks like there's some cut marks on it when I took the feed and nib out of the section to clean it. Uh, I used a knockout block um, if anyone has any questions on that, um, please let me know. Um, next, the cap. Uh, this is a two band cap. And the top end, you can unscrew the rubber retainer cap for uh, the clip. And what you do is you uh, place a clip over the top of the cap and then put that in, and then it just threads in and on anything that's threaded or friction fit as I, uh, I would always recommend using some heat and patience and gentle care when trying to remove this I used my hair dryer to heat up the top of the cap where it had the threads going in so that I could uh, hopefully uh, loosen them up somewhat um, so now that we got that uh, all explained, uh, obviously the point of business today is going to be to put a sack onto the, the sack nipple on this section and uh, cement it in place with some shellac and get uh, this pen into writing order to see how it works. So um, I'm going to set my pen parts aside and get out the sacks that I have and uh, explain that. Be right back. All right, back again. And I went through 
my selection of sacks and I chose uh, a number 18 um, using a straight wall. A lot of sources on the internet will tell you to use a neck sack which means that the neck is is narrowed down but then it widens out to a bigger diameter at the back so that uh, essentially you can get it to fit onto the sack nipple and um, still have a large diameter uh, sack to get a lot more volume of ink in there. That being said, um, uh, sources out there, you know, everyone has their opinion, but you don't want this sack to contact the, um, the outside of the barrel um, because as you're holding the pen to write, your hand's going to warm up that barrel and then in turn it's going to transfer um, if it's in contact with the sack and then that heat will warm up the fluid of the ink in the sack and the fluid will expand. Uh, it's, it's obviously not as hot as the concept of you know, heating water in a tea kettle, but when you do that to a tea kettle, the water will expand and eventually it turns to steam, uh, but uh, that steam has to come out and that's where the whistling comes. Well, instead of whistling, this fountain pen is going to burp ink out onto either your pa paper if you're lucky or um, your hands if you're unlucky or clothes, uh, worst case scenario. So uh, keep the sack a little smaller um, than the diameter of the inside of the barrel. Um, what I did was I took a selection of different sizes and I, I fit them in there and um, till I found one that was not snug but it wasn't uh, you know just bouncing around inside the inside of the barrel. Um, then using uh, techniques that I showed in my wherever lever fill restoration um, I cut the sack to the correct length uh, you know counting the distance that it will go inside the barrel um, marking that off at the end and then discounting the length of the section that isn't going to be where the sack is placed um, not to get into too much detail but you can go back to that wherever uh, lever filler restoration and it'll show you the actual um, process I did. Now that I have that um, cut to length uh, I get some shellac which um, got some right here shake it up a little to mix it up and I've also got if I need it which uh, my uh, sack spreader to uh, fit it on there so what I'm going to do is and take a little bit of shellac on the brush and carefully apply that to the uh, sack nipple and once again uh, keep in mind I've cleaned the pen up from the way I found it the old sack had been quite uh, dried out and essentially uh, just about petrified and was almost like a solid so that done uh, and take the uh, sack spreader put that in there widen it and uh, place the uh, nipple in there and got it on there kind of give it a turn to distribute the shellac and um, looks like it's uh, holding on there so I'm going to uh, grab a bit of paper towel I have here kind of clean off the uh, excess that's around there so as I've said in um, previous videos um, I actually use uh, graphite, powdered graphite, to uh, put on the outside of the sack. Uh, other people are going to tell you to use pure, um, unadulterated talc, meaning no perfumes, no oils added in, just the mineral talc that's ground up. Um, you can do whatever you want. Uh, so I'm going to set this sack down. Um, little tip I saw out on the internet if you uh, want to ensure that it stays on if it's uh, difficult and it's not wanting to stop slipping uh, a strip of just regular clear 
a half inch or three quarter inch scotch tape and wrap it around. Um, set it aside, minimum wait time, half hour. If you can wait and you're not like a kid at Christmas, uh, you can leave it overnight and let it dry. Um, I'm gonna let it wait, you know, at least a half hour before I put it back into the pen and uh, try to fill it. So I'm gonna leave you for a moment here and we'll be right back with the next step. I wanna talk a little bit about the pressure bar and the way that this is set up in the later dual folds, um, late 30s. Um, they have a pressure bar which is called a hanging pressure bar. Um, what this essentially means is now this one actually in the inside there's a a metal collar in there um, and it's the stop for the section uh, I don't know if it's actually visible but um, there's like a metallic collar in there and that is where the tab of the uh, lower end of the pressure bar will come to snag on and what you're going to have to do is uh, when you put the pressure bar back in I'm going to do it through the back and you want to try to keep it pressing up against the upper part of the barrel until it catches on that um, of course you could also I guess e more easily leave it down and um, keep going until you feel that catch on that collar. Now when I put that section in um, it's going to actually give it a natural um, guide to the point where it will find a catch on that and get purchase so that the bar doesn't go any farther and it actually causes it to flex and then compress the sack. So I just wanted to give you the, the basic idea of what you, I'm going to be trying to do uh, and what you want to do when you put that pressure bar back in. Um, okay, we're back and after the sack has had a chance to dry, um, what we're going to do is we're going to reinsert it back into uh, the barrel. And um, I don't know, I just, I prefer to kind of have the... Uh, the, the actual imprint uh, at me when I'm holding the pen to write with so uh, I'm going to kind of bring that there and insert in there and there now it's tight enough in there that it will stay so next take the pressure bar and um, Gonna try to fit that in, and actually, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually take the sack out, get that down in there, and then put that back in so it, I know for sure that it's, as you can see, it's pushing the uh, sack pushing the bar out so anyway we got that in there now I can slide it in so try to find a spot where that catches on the collar inside the barrel I'm going to do that off camera and then get back to putting it um, back together. I believe I've got the um, I've got the pressure bar in there, so I'm going to insert the button over the bar and put that down in there. So. I don't think it's exactly right. I'm going to have to try it again. Sorry. All right. We've got the pressure bar uh, in the pen to the point where it remains up. Um, 
you press on it, um, you feel resistance and um, I'm going to test it here with some water. To fill a button filler you immerse the nib up to the section to press the uh, button give it a few seconds to press it again and then you know wait several more seconds after that and allow the the uh, sack to expand now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a uh, a ink vial and we're going to put that out um, it looks like about uh, three quarters of a milliliter. Um, I don't know for the size that this pen is if that's normal or not. I'm not um, familiar with it to really say. Um, I'd have to look online, but um, almost one milliliter. Um, that being said, at this point, the pen. Um, is is effectively uh, ready to write and I'm going to do the last thing is going to be an ink fill and a writing test. Okay, back at the writing desk and um, we're going to see how this thing performs. Um, I actually found out that um, kind of a pleasant surprise uh, this pen is a flexible nib. What that means is you get some uh, line variation when you apply pressure on the nib so there's what your writing sample and my not so well practiced script um, what you also can do and obviously, this gives a little bit better idea of the uh, the change in line variation, and um, I don't know how well this keeps up. as far as uh, the flow, but um, it does a very narrow to a fairly wide line. So that should give you an idea of the difference in the line width. Very nice find actually. Um, and I'm going to call that a, uh, a finished job. Until the next uh, pen, um, I welcome your comments. Uh, like it if you uh, found the video informative and enjoyable, and subscribe to the channel um, so that you can get more videos in the future. I'll see you later.